Hi, this is Paul from finishyoursong.com and in this video I want to have a look at the practical application of what I was talking about in the last video, which was, in brief recap, trying to find a point on our digital scale here that is the equivalent of naught VU on the old needle-driven meters on our tape machines of yesteryear. And I suggested that 0 VU is actually minus 18 dBFS and that when we're recording that's the level we want to be trying to get our average signal bouncing around. Now there's an advantage to this in that when you come to mix you've got headroom to go up as well as to come down and if your fader is at zero as the faders in Cubase as most doors are actually logarithmic you'll see that the distance between 0 and 5 there and the, therefore the space you've got to maneuver it, the precision with which you can control it, is much greater there than if you were trying to do a 5 dB cut or a 3 dB cut down here, where you're really much reduced to typing in numbers. So that's fine and dandy, and when we record we're looking for something like that. A nice waveform, plenty of data, but lots of headroom. The only problem is, of course, you don't always get stuff presented to you in that kind of format. As you can see, this bass guitar track up here has a lot of signal. It's not a thin uh, waveform with a lot of space around it. Now, there's nothing inherently wrong with the way that's being recorded. You've got a good, strong signal. It's not clipping. It's not hitting dB full scale. It's not hitting zero on the meter but it's going to be a bit loud. And the problem with that is that when you start to add up all of these tracks, what you end up with is when you turn to your mixer and you come through to your meter at the end, what you end up with is a fairly loud signal. In fact, it will clip over zero. I've got this set up so that the music runs through this stereo mix channel. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the track going and then we'll jump forward in time a couple of minutes and you can see the end result of having these tracks as they were all recorded with everything at zero all the way through. To make it a reasonably fair representation I've actually knocked out the inserts, the EQ and the sends on this track so what I'm hearing is simply the recorded tracks as they were presented ready to mix. See you in a minute. Okay, so there we have it. That's uh, forever now. And, uh, we just go over to our stereo mix. You can see that it actually peaked at 5.4 plus. So that would have been way, way too loud. You can see our subgroups where they've been uh, summed together are also well on their way, apart from the backing vocals. So what can we do about it? Well, on each track we know where the peak level is. So what we could do is start pulling the faders down to give ourselves a reasonable uh, level. However, that again goes to the point that if you then have got your starting mix with everything at notionally zero, your fader is going to be way, way down. There is another way, and it's one that's available to all DAWs, but you have to work out for yourself how you can do that. In Cubase, if you open the channel settings window, we have a gain knob. And what this enables us to do is to adjust the input level to the track. So here, our base is minus 7.2 maximum. And if we want that to peak at minus 18, all we have to do is to reduce the gain down to minus 
and the minus 10.8 and the minus 7.2 add up to minus 18. That's a bit tedious um, if you're going to do that on every track. What would be better is if we could just go across each track and do it as we go. And in Cubase we can. We can put in the pre-rack. When we open that up we can see that there is the gain there of minus 10.8. So we can simply go through minus 9.6 that's minus 9.7 so that needs to be minus 8.3 show my dodgy maths off now minus 7.6 is minus 10.4 so basically what we're doing is we're adding the peak level that the meters have shown us on the run through of the song was obtained and we're knocking that back down till it comes to minus 18 I'm just going to go through and do the rest of the song and I'll be with you in a minute. OK, so I've now gone through and set the gain for all of these tracks. Now you'll have to work out in your DAW how you can do that, whether it's got a built-in gain adjustment on each track or whether you have to use a gain plugin. But either way, that's how you can set up um, your gain structure. So what I'm going to do now is reset the meters and play the song through again and we'll see where we end up this time. So again, I'm going to jump forward a couple of minutes. See you then. Right, there we are. So, if we can now have a look at our tracks, we'll see that across the board we've pretty much got minus 18 as where the tracks are peaking. Some of them a little less for whatever reason, but that's not something I was going to worry about too much. Clearly they're all peaking at around minus 18. We've got green dashes all across the board. I should point out that I'm using a song that I'm remixing. So I've left the pan positions as they are, which is obviously not what you'd do normally. You'd have everything centered before you started adjusting the gain. But I have knocked out, as I said before, the inserts, the EQ and the sends. So what you are hearing is just the raw tracks. And if we come over here, you can see on our stereo mix that it peaked at minus seven. So we've got a good starting point now for the mix. And we can start to bring in the inserts, the EQ and the sends without worrying about the output level rising so high so quickly that we're going to have to start pulling everything down as we go. We've got plenty of control of our mix and that's what we want. Hope that's been helpful. So until next time, you take care of yourselves. <laughs>